Bonjour, Kina Magi and Nene Ireland Dijnikas, and welcome to this production of the MyMap Network. Today's episode, Chapter 7, Lesson 1, Hands-On Numerical Expressions. We will have a new essential question in this chapter that we'll be exploring. And that is how are patterns used to solve problems? Before we begin the actual lesson, let's look at what the homework will entail so that we have a general idea of where we're going. And looking at the homework, it says refer to the homework helper. So on this question, you're going to actually need to use the problem here with new numbers. You see that we have some bar diagrams and we'll be writing numerical expressions and evaluating them in the assignment. We'll talk about those words in just a moment. Mm -hmm. All students should have the lesson one packet. It begins on page 481. If you don't have it, you should pause the video and you'll get it. As we complete this work, it is expected that you will fill this thing, these things as you go. That way you have a resource available to you when you go to do the assignment or study for any assessments. There are some vocabulary words on your packet page, such as numerical expression. And a numerical expression is a combination of numbers in at least one operation. Eight plus seven, two times three, nine divided by two. 10 squared plus two. All of those are examples of numerical expressions. They sound a lot like what you might just call a math problem. The word evaluate means to solve the problem by completing each operation. So we're gonna begin on 481 and you see our bar diagram here that's gonna go along with our story problem. And it says Gregory and his family went hiking over the weekend. On Saturday, they hiked five miles. And on Sunday, they hiked five miles. Use the bar diagram to write and evaluate two numerical expressions to represent the total number of miles hiked. Our first numerical expression is going to be an addition expression, which means we're adding. And you can see that I have the first five right here. And the number missing is the five right here. At this point, to evaluate it, I'd simply add five plus five, and I get a sum of 10. And that would be my answer. So make sure you go ahead and write that in. Give you a few seconds to do that. If you need more time, anytime you see me get to the point where I say, all right, I'll clear my screen. You can always hit pause if you, need an additional few seconds. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clear. Let's go to the next slides. Now, in addition to addition, I could write a new a multiplication numerical expression. I'm going to grab my annotation tool here. This is the same problem. And I happen to notice that I have multiples of the five. So I can say, how many do I have? Basic niche. So there are two of them. Two, two times five is 10. So they hiked a total of 10 miles. Go ahead and write that in. Both of these are numerical expressions that will reach the same answer. And that's to be expected as we remember that repeated addition is multiplication. So I'll give you about 15 or 20 seconds and then we'll be moving to the page, top of page 482. We'll be doing that one together. Then we'll do the talk about it. You'll practice a couple and then we'll be off on the assignment. All right, let's move forward here. I'm gonna go ahead and clear my screen. So we have the next problem in line. 
And this is the triad, top of 482. Mrs. Yearling has two groups of five students and two groups of four students. Use the bar diagram to write and evaluate two numerical expressions to represent the total number of students. So you can see that here are our groups. And you notice that they put the number of us groups to kind of in an organized way. Here's my groups of five, here's my groups of four. That will be useful when you get to the multiplication one. But for now, I'm simply just gonna move the numbers down. Here's my five here, my five there. There's my five, I need to write that one in. That's the world's biggest top to a five. There's my four and there's my four. So now I evaluate it. Five plus five is 10, plus four is 14, plus four is 18. I'm going to use the text to write students so you can read my writing. If I spell it right. 18 students. If you're doing the work on your own, you probably don't need to rewrite the expression to evaluate it. You could have gone with this step and then just put an equal over here. A few more seconds. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. Let's see that they have it. And now another way is using multiplication. And there is a helpful hint. Parentheses tell you which numbers to group together. Perform operations inside parentheses first. And that is uber important. So let's go ahead and I'm going to highlight that for you. Perform operations inside parentheses first. This is part of what we call PEMDAS, which is more than just, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. It's literally an instruction on how to solve these style problems. You start with anything in the P for parentheses. Then you move to exponents, that's your E. Then multiplying and dividing from left to right, those are equals when it comes to PEMDAS. So that's why you're moving left to right. And then multiplying, or sorry, adding and subtracting are your A and S at the bottom, also from left to right, and those are equals. You'll see a lot of social media posts that will test your PEMDAS skills. And hopefully after this unit, you could walk on there and say, look out adults, this is how it's done. All right, so let's use our bar graph here. And I look and I see I have basic and niche groups of five. And I have basic and niche groups of four. So now I evaluate two times five plus two times four. That is 10. That is eight. 10 plus eight is 18. Make that a little neater. So there are 18 students divided into groups. So referring back to PEMDAS, we did our parentheses first. That's how we get 10 plus 8. Kind of similar to what we did with the associative property in Chapter 6. And then we added from left to right, 10 plus 8 is 18. Go ahead and write that in. I'll give you a few seconds. You probably should highlight, underline, or circle perform operations inside parentheses first. All right, go ahead and clear my screen here. Let's see our answers. We did well. Yay for us. All right, so let's do a couple talk about it. Um, these ones you could fill in in some cases, or I'll let you know. Evaluate the addition expression to find the sum. Does the order in which the expression is written change the sum? And you really shouldn't need to write this down because what is our commutative property? That no matter what order we write the numbers down when adding, the sum is the same. Same rule applies in multiplication, except we call that the commutative property of multiplication instead of the commutative property of addition. And I could check that because 7 and 7 is 14, plus 5 is 19, plus 5 is 24. 
Seven plus five is 12, plus seven is 19, plus five is 24. Basically, when I add things into each other, it doesn't matter which group I get first, I'm gonna have the same to total in the end. All right, so let's do this one together as well. Suppose Ms. Yearling also had another group of four students, right? Two numerical expressions to represent. And if you remember up to the top, we already had the five and the five. We had two groups of four, and now we have a third group of four. So this is expression one, but that's it. That's the whole expression. Unless you put the evaluated equal but they didn't ask us to do that. Now I could look and say, okay, how many groups of five do I have? I still have niche. But now how many groups of four? Beijing niche in this way. And now I could evaluate it. 10 plus 12 is 22 students. So as we change numbers around, you can easily move this around, figure it out. Change your value, your numerical expression, you get it. Now we're going to have you practice a couple. So I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen. We're going to do numbers three and at least number three. And then maybe one on the back side here. And it says Caleb's music class is divided into five groups of four students for a project. Use the bar diagram to write and evaluate two numerical expressions to represent the total number of students in this music class. When you do this, I request that you pause the video. Once you're done, unpause the video and see how you did. And we will go over it. Let's go ahead and pause the video now. Welcome back. Let's see how we did here. Here's one expression. Four plus four plus four plus four plus four equals 20, and that's your addition one. So let's move down the line here. The multiplication one, we had five groups of four, so five times four is 20, so there are 20 students in the music class. So both of those expressions reach the same answer, whether you call it a product with multiplication or a sum with addition. We had 20 students. Do one more on this page. Let's try number four. Bailey's soccer team had snacks after the game that included 12 granola bars, 12 mini muffins, and 14 bananas. Use the bar diagram to write and evaluate two numerical expressions to represent the total number of snacks after the soccer game. Pause the video, unpause it when you're ready. Let me pause the video now. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. First, using only addition, 12, 12, and 14 is 38. You see the 12, the 12, and the 14. We could multiply it as what ended with the multiplication and addition because there are two groups of 12. Put them in parentheses, plus 14 equals 38. Two times 12 is 24, plus that 14 is how we get to 38. It would be a very different answer if I went, all right, 12 and 14 is 26 times two is 52. That's why you do the parentheses first and then move down the line. Let's go ahead and get to number six. The bar diagram below can be represented by three of the four expressions underneath it. Find the value of each expression and circle the one that does not represent the bar diagram. Go ahead and figure this answer out. You'll need to pause the video and you can unpause it when you're done. You may pause the video now. All right, let's see how it went. And when we had this bar diagram, you see that we had the five, the four, the five, the four, the five, the four. So we know that's gonna work. We also know that we had one, two, three groups of five and three groups of four. So that works. We had the weird way of doing it because we have three groups. And this is the part that you may not be used to, but if you had taken this group and put this together as one group, two groups, and three, 
I would have three groups of five plus four. And this is what it would be like. But I don't have to go five plus four in parentheses, plus five plus four in parentheses, plus five plus four in parentheses, because there are three groups. What I don't have is three plus five plus three plus four, because that is going to be eight, 11, and 15, when the answer is really 27. But this is a different way. You are welcome to write in this fashion. I know that it's something that would be kind of something you feel comfortable with. All right, so go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and clear the screen. So we'll go back to the homework page, and this will also be showing the top part in your Google form. Make sure you answer all three questions. You have multiple ways of returning this to me. If you're in person, you're gonna fill it out and you're gonna turn it into the bin. Um, if you're in, coming in later in the week, you could save it and return it to me all at once on your first day back in person for that week. You could opt to uh, write it out and answer using the Google form and still give me the paper. You could put your name on both sides, the top of both sides, scan or take a picture of it and email it to me at myerlinatsitechipschool.net or text it to me at 989-750-1640. Or you can simply just do it all in the Google form. But if you're doing it all in the Google form, I rep recommend that you solve it on paper and then type the answers in. It'll make your life easier. If you have, if you have any questions on the content, please reach out to me at myerlinatsitechipschool.net. Visit us during office hours and be prepared to ask questions in class. Have a minute, Gijigad. Minwa, Mama P.